This screencast is one in a series on process calculations, and the title is Reaction Systems Element Mass Balances. The content is stream variables and element fluxes, the element mass balance approach, independent elements, the number of independent mass balances, the atom matrix and the rank of the atom matrix, and one example on how to apply element mass balances to process calculations. In a system, carbohydrates, CH2O, are digesting using oxygen according to the respiration reaction. CH2O plus O2 yields CO2 plus water, H2O. This could take place within an organism, with an input stream, with the reactants, and an output stream, with the reactants, products, and possibly even byproducts. The aim of process calculations is to calculate the fluxes of components in and out of a system. And the stream variables are expressed in terms of component fluxes. However, the element fluxes in a stream of, for example, CH2O, they are expressed in terms of the stream variables representing the component fluxes. So, for example, the molar flux of C equals 1 times the molar flux of CH2O, simply because there's one carbon atom in each molecule of CH2O. Regarding hydrogen, the hydrogen molar flux equals two times the molar flux of CH2O, because there are two atoms of hydrogen in each molecule of CH2O. The mass balance approach and element mass balances build on the fact that elements cannot be produced or destroyed. They are conservative. So for any given system, the mass in equals the mass out, and the moles in equals the number of moles out. The mass balances expressed as element mass balances in a steady state system are input equal output. Note that there is no production in the mass balance equation since elements cannot be produced or consumed. One important concept is the concept of independent elements, because one can formulate one mass balance for each element if the elements are independent. And elements are independent if they either only exist as free elements or exist in more than one combination with other elements in the system. For example, Let's consider a system where we have the three components C2H4, H2, and C2H6. And we have two elements, C and H. And they are independent because they exist in more than one combination with other elements. However, let's consider a system with the two components C2H4 and C4H8. In this case, C and H are dependent because they do not exist in more than one combination with other elements. The ratio between C and H is 1 to 2 in all of the components present in the system. This can be quantified using the atom matrix. And it says that the number of independent elements, and thus the number of independent element mass balances, equals the rank of the atom matrix. And the atom matrix is defined as in the columns, we have each component in the system, and each row represents the stoichiometric content of each element in the different components. And the rank is defined as the dimension of the largest square submatrix that has a determinant greater than zero. We will soon see what that means in practice. Now we should look at the rank of the atom matrix. Let's take a system with two elements and three components. In this case, the columns represent C2H4, H2, and C2H6, and the rows represent C and H. And if we take a look at the first column, we see a 2 for C2 and a 4 for H4. The second column is 0 and 2, because H2 does not contain any carbon, but it contains two hydrogen atoms, and the third column is 2 and 6 for C2H6. The rank 
of this matrix is 2, which means that we have two independent elements, and thus we can form two independent element mass balances. In this example, we have two elements, C and H, but only two components, C2H4 and C4H8. If we look at the atom matrix and the first column, we see that it's a multiple of the second column. That means that the rank is 1, because the determinant is 2 times 8 minus 4 times 4, which is 0. And the conclusion is that in this case, we only have one independent element, and we can only form one element mass balance when we make process calculations. Now let's go to a more comprehensive example. In a system, 80% of the carbohydrates, CH2O, in the feed are converted to CO2. Calculate the molar fraction of CO2 in the dry output gas stream if the molar input of O2 is three times larger than the molar input of CH2O. We should now apply the six-step methodology. First, clarification of the process conditions. We should make a process chart with system boundary and stream variables. We should make a degree of freedom analysis, putting special focus on the atom matrix. Form the system of equations, we should make a computer-aided solution and then give a clear answer. The first thing we should do is to clarify the process conditions. Here we have a reaction system at steady state and the problem is stated in terms of molar units. We also have a process chart with the system boundary and stream variables. We have four components. We have three elements. We have one input stream and one output stream. And as we can see, we have six stream variables, two in stream one and four in stream two. We can now make a degree of freedom analysis. And the first step is to analyze the atom matrix. In this case, let the columns represent the components CH2O, O2, CO2, and H2O. And the rows should represent the elements C, H, and O. The atom matrix is as follows. Taking a look at the first column, we see that it's 1, 2, 1, because CH2O contains one atom of C, two atoms of H, and one atom of O. The rank of the atom matrix, that is the number of independent mass balances that we can use in our solution, is 3. It is now time to summarize. The number of stream variables is 6, we have no specified stream variables. We can form three independent element mass balances. We have two subsidiary process information, and we can introduce one basis of calculation. And the degrees of freedom is zero. The system of equations will thus contain six equations. And those are the three element mass balances, one for C, one for H, and one for O, and all three of them are on the form input equal output. And as we see, the element fluxes are expressed in terms of component stream variables. We have two subsidiary information, one for the conversion of CH2O, and the other one defines the feed ratio, the ratio between oxygen gas and carbohydrates in stream one. And finally, we have the basis of calculation. And here I've chosen F1CH2O equals 100. This can also be expressed in matrix notation on the form A times X equals Y. And here we have a coefficient matrix A, and X is a column vector that includes all the stream variables, and Y is the right-hand side of all the equations. Numerical solution can easily be done in MATLAB and it yields a solution array as follows. We can see that F2CH2O equals 20, and it seems logical because we have a conversion rate of 80 and the input of CH2O equals 100. Now is the time to give a clear answer. The molar fraction of CO2 in the dry output gas is the ratio between F2CO2 and the sum of F2O2 and F2CO2. The content of this screencast was stream variables and element fluxes, the basis, the background for the element mass balance approach, a discussion about independent elements in terms of number of mass balances, 
the atom matrix and the rank of the atom matrix. And then I showed an example on how to apply element mass balances in process calculations.